Have you ever used Pinterest for your business, for your home, as an inspiration? Have you ever thought about using Pinterest for your business to get your product in front of more customers? Today on the Rainmaker Family Show, Stephen and I interviewed Teresa Toledo, who is known as the Pinterest queen, Pinterest pioneer, and she's super passionate about marketing and helping businesses gain visibility. All right, Teresa, we are so excited to have you on the show. Welcome to the Rainmaker Family Show. Well, thank you so much for having me here. This is such a fun opportunity, you know, to be here with you and with your audience. And it's really exciting. Thank you. Now, you guys heard me talk about Teresa a little bit in the intro, but Teresa is kind of the secret sauce behind the scenes uh, with a lot of our Pinterest account, as well as she she dabbles in our TikTok. And I shouldn't even say dabbles because <laughs> you really help us uh, get the message out there on TikTok. And you were one of the ones who really actually pushed us in the right direction. And um, Teresa, in, in our world, she's known as the Pinterest queen. You guys, she's a Pinterest expert. So we really want to focus this episode on that platform because I feel like one, there's a lot of misconceptions about Pinterest. Two, people are afraid of Pinterest. And three, I feel like Pinterest is a resource that you could really tap for your business. No matter what type of business you own, what type of business you're starting, Pinterest is such a huge resource. So Teresa, what got you excited about Pinterest? Like when you first started digging into it, like tell us a little bit about the platform. Who's on the platform? Like how does it work? Why Pinterest? So it's so it's kind of funny. Uh, I've been working with Pinterest for over six years. Uh, in the process, I learned that I would play around with other platforms, and then it got to one point, a little over two years ago, where I said, you know what? I want to specialize. I like the platforms. I have fun. But I feel that Pinterest is the place for me, and one of the reasons is because Pinterest pretty much is the introverts platform. Um, one thing, and I always like to share this, if you, know, if you don't hear anything else, if you leave today with just one thing, I want you to leave with this. Pinterest is not social media. And the, I, I'm seeing jaws dropping. Every time I say that, jaws drop. And the reason is uh, the intention of people on the platform, how the platform works. Uh, and it's completely different. We cannot compare to Instagram and YouTube. People are not there to socialize. People don't care about you. They don't even care about your brand, but they care about what you offer. How can you better their lives? How can you, your brand, your product, be part of building a better life, a happier, more inspired life for them? So for me, that was the thing that said, you know what, this is, I like this. It feels good. Uh, with this mindset in place, Pinterest pretty much is a very positive place. They pride themselves. They push themselves to not allow negativity, politics, bullying. Um, it's sometimes it's a little bittersweet to say, but th there is a little bit of a censorship there. There are things we cannot talk about. Pinterest wants to be this happy, family, uh, inclusive place, creative place for everyone. So people will come in, we'll try to push things that are against the TOS, but guess what? They don't get seen. They don't get views. They cannot advertise. They cannot even do much organically. And I like that. That's amazing. I mean, I, I never thought about it that way, but it's so true, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you just think about anyone listening to this, how have you used Pinterest? It's not like you have probably tons of friends on there, you know, that you're like friend requesting, you're not probably in these groups, it's not a social platform, which I bet some of our listeners like are like, Oh, my goodness, I never thought about this. I'm introverted, this might be the place for me, right? So um, yes, and it's, I mean, and it's funny, because we kind of bundle it with all the platforms, of course, it's an app, uh, you could message people, you could send, share, follow, right? You could call, you can comment, you could start a conversation. Uh, and also Google bundles Pinterest with social networks. And that makes us think, okay, this is social media. But in the end, when we go there, we go there to dream. We go there to find things to do, things to try, things to buy. We don't go there to follow up with friends, families, neighbors. Actually, Pinterest is, you know, one of the biggest thing. That's also a myth nowadays. But we have mostly females 
than moms. Uh, we make 60% of the platform. Eight in 10 millennial moms in the U.S. are on the platform. But when they go there, they don't go there to catch up. They go there to dream, to relax, right? To get ideas, to get creative. And that changes why it's not social media. You know, it's right. Mm -hmm. And you sharing that Pinterest is a place where people want to go. They want to dream. They want to be inspired. They want to create a board that they go back to like, I want my home to look like this, or I need this inspiration or that idea with you sharing that. How do you feel like businesses today can utilize Pinterest as a place that people are searching for? Are there things that businesses can do, whether you're starting out from scratch or you have this big booming business right now? now so one thing that i always uh, if i get asked is pinterest for everyone and i would love to say yes for every business but in the end it's not why uh, remember if people are going to pinterest to dream to find out things that they don't even know that exist that you know answer their uh questions but they don't know much about it how is it that you know our a product or a business or an idea will work they may not take action right away most likely they won't but because they go there to plan to dream to build they're going to see you there first right if your product is good your idea is good they want to save it for later because they will they think okay i don't i'm not going to do this now but i know i'm doing this people are planners they're planning their lives uh for example countless people I talk to, you know, uh, they're not even dating, but they already have their wedding planned. How crazy is that? This is a thing. I know a few people personally in that situation. I know how I want it to be. I know where I want it to be. Are they? No, I am not. So when a business owner, a service provider, you know, depending on what they offer, is able to put themselves there, to plan themselves in that moment, Later on, when that person is ready to take action, guess who they're going to think about? Also, that is the place for you to introduce the latest ideas because they're open. We One thing that Pinterest always tells us is that 97% of searches are unbranded. So that shows us that they're not looking for a brand, for a name, for a specific, any specific product. They are open. Right. So when you come in and you bring the solution, you bring that idea, they will receive. So in this case, the best thing for a business owner with an online business, uh, an online business. And in some cases, if you're selling through Amazon, you can also benefit. But then we're going to talk about what is good, what is bad, what is best. The best is always if you have your online store, of course, create your Pinterest business account. Claim your website, connect. Maybe you can even apply to become a verified merchant and let Pinterest do the magic. Get your storefront on Pinterest so people can find you and love what you have and, you know, go after it. That's so key what you said about 90 to 90% of the searches are not branded. 97%. 97. So pretty much all the searches are not branded. People aren't going on yep. and searching this specific brand name. Um, which they would do like on Amazon or something. Right. Um, but I, I remember like recently, so we're, we are building a, like a back unit. And so we're going through like the kitchen appliances right now. And so we've been, we've been right in this, we go to Pinterest and we're like, you know, white modern kitchen stove. Right. So like, that's the keyword we're throwing in there. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed was interesting was there was one brand of stove that was like coming up in all these different pins and uh, how cool is it for that business? Like they're probably getting so much traffic from mm -hmm. all these different sources. They're wholesaling through all these different websites. You can buy at Home Depot and all these other sites. But at the end of the day, it's all going back to this one business. Mm -hmm. And it's off that branded search. People searching for, a, I think I even just searched white stove because like it's not super common to have a white stove. And so I searched that and there was just one coming up every single time. And it had kind of like this trendy design. And it was so interesting to see. Like I was like, wow this business has done some behind the scenes work, you know, like that doesn't just happen on accident um, to be showing up in almost every pin that I was seeing on that search term. So I know that's a, what is so cool is that this is kind of in your mind now. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm like, that's Oh, what you want. <laughs> yeah. like that's the stove, even though mm -hmm. it's 
twice the price of other stuff. We right? gotta have the white stuff. We have to have it now. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, it's in all the all the top pins. You know, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, and so, how do how would you recommend someone get started with Pinterest if they're like, I want to explore this, maybe even just see if maybe my product, my service, whatever I offer is a good fit for Pinterest. Is there any type of like research that you would even do on Pinterest to see like, are my people there, you know? So usually what I what I like to do uh, in this, you know, how I help clients and when I get asked, the first thing is that um, we really look into, okay, what is your niche? What is your offer? Uh, believe it or not, sometimes people come in and say, hey, I have a food truck. Pinterest good for you then my answer is like well if you are local unless you have something such as a location destination right uh, I believe your person is going to be there but are they going to come here to actually buy from you but then on the other hand you have something that you're offering online are you selling a recipe book so it really depends on that now when we think about um, who would work best with Pinterest. And I always like to think this way. If you go in and you search what you're selling, what you're offering, and you find a lot of people doing, obviously it is working and it's happening or your competition, right? But then if you go there and you don't find them there, what I like to think is that, okay, this is an opportunity for you to pave the way and reach results faster. Uh, one example, I worked with a brand of tattoo numbing cream. Simple as that. That's the product that they have. So we did a little research. We found that there was one brand advertising. And the guy said, you know, I really want to get in there. I said, okay, we're going to get this working. Within three or four months, his brand was topping the other guy. Simply because there weren't so many. And then if you think about it, well, people are using this platform for ideas and inspiration. Now, maybe his product was his product selling a lot straight from Pinterest, maybe. But on the other hand, he was advertising on other platforms and everything he would be getting from Pinterest would feed those other ads. So it works in conjunction. Um, the best way is to, if you don't have a Pinterest account, if you have one, use what you have and search. Search for your product, search for a competitor, put the cap of your client of your ideal audience and think what are they looking for what are they searching for and then do that search see what pops up and use this measurement if that is you know your competitors are there there is a reason they're not just doing that because they like pinterest but if your competitors are not there then it goes okay this is an open way for you you should be there. And as long as you have something to sell online, to provide online, because in the end, it is a worldwide platform. In terms of users, there are more Pinterest users than Twitter users. But it's not nearly as close to what we see on Facebook or what we see on TikTok, right? You know, those are way giant platforms. But then the benefits are the in intention of the person on the platform. They are going to Pinterest to find something already. They're not just, oh, let me, you know, mindlessly scroll and chill usually. Well, some do, but that's not the biggest intention. Like we do on other platforms, right? We go to Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, even Twitter, and we just want to see what's going on. Not on Pinterest. So that kind of increases that power. So this is the exercise. Go to Pinterest. There is a little search bar. You can use your desktop. You can use your phone. Uh, and try, see what comes up, see how does it look like. And if you have a website or if you have a blog and you never really utilize, search your name. Sometimes people may have found you and liked you and saved something about you that you don't even know. So you could be there. We, I've seen that before, brands that are on the platform, but they never touched it. Because Pinterest users, we call them pinners, love saving ideas. And a lot of times they see the ideas outside of Pinterest and they can pull that to Pinterest and save it. Gotcha. So you you may be there and you don't know. I would love for you to just kind of share a little bit like a tactical for, let's just say an Amazon seller that's gone through our program. They've launched on a couple products on Amazon and they're hearing about Pinterest, how it's a search. How would you like, what are some tactical things that someone could do like, like right now, say like they're even new to setting up an account or they have a 
an existing account, are there certain things that they need to put in their profile and their title? Like what would you recommend those first couple, like three steps that they do? Okay, so the very first thing, of course, I don't want to be repetitive, but it is what it is. You got to create your account. Make sure that your account is a business account. Uh, if you currently have an account, you can could turn that personal account to a business account, and that is okay. There is no harm in that. Actually, if somebody is already using Pinterest, I would rather have everything centralized in one account so they don't have to be off and on from one account to another. Uh, and they can actually see what's going on with their content. But one caveat, um, if you are going to use your Pinterest account for marketing for your product purposes, uh, make sure to turn secret. You don't have to delete everything. Any content that is not relevant to your people. So classic example, my account talks about Pinterest. Um, I like cats. I used to have a cutie do cat board that does not align at the moment with my intentions. So I keep okay. it secret, <laughs> right? So let's keep things, um, you know, make it intentional. So the very first thing, you if you have a website, you got to add that website in claim. It's a fairly simple process. If you have Shopify, the connection is pretty much automated, works really well. Um, but you have to have that website there. If you don't have a website, that's fine. Uh, if you ask me, can I use the link to my product? If you have just one product and one link, I would say, okay, add that to your profile link. Remember, we are going to now talk about good, better, and best. There are things that are good. So good is having an account with something, anything, okay? Better is work a little bit on that account. Best is when you have a website and you have an account and you already have a opinion and content strategy ongoing, right? So we want to keep that. So in the good phase, you're going to make sure that your profile picture uh, is the same across all platforms. So if you already have a little picture on Instagram, on TikTok, or Facebook, use the same. We want recognition here. Also, as a business account, you can create a banner that kind of looks like a Facebook page banner. So you can give people a little bit more context with that banner. Then the most important part is that if your business has a name, the first thing you're going to do is write your business name as your profile name wrong you are going to write it there but you have more characters to add something called keywords pinterest is a visual search engine as a visual search engine it needs keywords keywords are pinterest seo i know it sounds complicated but it's not trust me it's not so what you're going to add there beside your brand name is a little bit of what do you offer if you are offering home decor or if you are offering a potty training sticker i want you to put your brand name and right after that potty training sticker if that's your only product right because you want to have those keywords which are the main words to explain the problem that you solve right there on your profile name why because it shows up on search if you just put your name Let's say your brand is called Rainbow Tree. Nobody's searching for a rainbow tree. But if let's say, and I'm just making this up, <laughs> rainbow tree potty training stickers, people are searching for potty training stickers, but not for rainbow tree. So it's very important that you have there and people overlook this like crazy. The next step is a bio or description. Pinterest calls it description because they had to make it different, right? Uh, so that's your bio. What is kind of nice is that your Pinterest bio most likely is longer than your Instagram, than your Twitter, than your TikTok. So you can write a little bit more. I don't want you to go in and say, hi, I help moms with stickers. No, I want you to say a little bit more. We see that. Hi, I am a mom. I like my kids. I make stickers. No, people don't care. People want to know how can you make their lives better? What problems do you solve? So you're gonna go straight there. Uh, we are Rainbow Tree. We create potty training stickers that help kids get potty trained faster and so on. Put the cap, the thinking cap of the mom who needs that product. What is, what is she searching for? 
and type that on the search bar. What shows up, those are keywords. Simple as that, you know, do not overthink. So that's gonna be your banner, profile picture, profile name, profile description. If you have that already fine-tuned within a week, a few weeks, your profile starts showing up when people search for you. Now, because it is a search engine, Everything takes a little bit longer, right? It's kind of when you have a website and you're working with your SEO. That thing takes time and that's okay because even though it takes time, it stays there forever. Unless you shut down your account, it's always going to be there. It's not going to be hidden. It's always going to be there. So that's your first step. Next step, and that's something that people kind of feel a little confused. You need to get your product pictures or videos there. It's not going to happen by itself. It's not like Google. You create your website and your things show up on Google one day. No, they're not going to show up. You will have to do that manual work of uploading the picture, writing down a title, writing down a description, linking to your product. You don't have to think about doing this all at once. Uh, you can plan, okay, I'm going to try a few times. Pinterest is really easy. Uh, you could do that with your desktop, with your phone. Um, very intuitive in that manner. You just go filling up the blanks, publish. Filling up the blanks, publish. Of course, once you get to the level where you want to do better, you want to have a strategy. The same way that with other platforms, if you really want to grow, you need to have a consistency in content, in publishing, in scheduling. And then when they get to the best, of course, that's what you're doing and you have everything set up. But this is the very first step. Go out there, create your profile, play around, get your first product images on the platform. If, again, you have a Shopify website, the connection is super easy and you can apply to become a verified merchant, which is a program that Pinterest launched uh, beginning of last year. It's not for everyone. Uh, it doesn't work if you don't have the product, uh, how can I say, the stocks. If it's, if it's on demand, it's not going to work. It's only going to work if you have the product and the quantities. But if you do and it works, it's a good deal. And it's free. Awesome. I feel like, you know, I always try to, when, when new opportunities come out, like everyone's like, you got to do TikTok, you got to do, you know, like it's, it's tempting to try and do yes. all the things. So definitely, like, if you're listening to this episode, listen to it and analyze Pinterest see is this is this for me in this season you know and I think for us when we started Pinterest is back before Rainmakers uh, we were in the wedding industry and in the wedding industry Pinterest is definitely something you want to do because like you said brides are planning their weddings on Pinterest like they're pinning engagement ideas and wedding ideas and all these things and so um, although the wedding business is local right uh, there we would have people from all over finding us through Pinterest which is very mm -hmm. interesting and what we started doing, I, I'm trying to remember, do you remember the early days of Pinterest? I feel like you were doing it. Um, you were doing like, everyone saw Chelsea would blog and then she would pin a couple photos from that blog post. And then we kind of took it up from there and we had um, we had uh, an office assistant at the time and she kind of became our nanny when we had a baby. But at the time she was just doing office assistant stuff and then she would post stuff. Like we'd be like, okay, now, so it kind of started as like a dabbling thing and then it became a system, right? It became a system where I was like, now, every time Chelsea blogs, Lainey would take those highlights and she would pin them in a certain way, mm -hmm. right? So we kind of went up from there and then we went to having a, you know, an account manager and it's kind of been the same thing with, with Rainmakers where we just, we didn't do anything. And then I think I posted a couple of things and tried to run some ads and then we kind of created a system and then now we work with you and it's almost totally hands off. So I would kind of like, if you're listening to this episode, figure out where you're at. Like, do you have an hour a month? Do you have an hour a week? Do you have five hours a week to put towards this thing? Do you have time? Do you have money? Like, where are you at with this process? And how are you going to use business, uh, Pinterest to help your business? Um, whether it's just a little or a lot. One thing I would love to hear from you, Teresa, is um, how do you see businesses using Pinterest as a research tool? I know our rainmakers will use the trends tool on Pinterest. I think it's trends.pinterest.com or something like that. Because Pinterest is a lot faster of a platform than, let's say, Amazon. Amazon, it takes you know, there's a trend, it's going to take two months before that trend is on Amazon, because people have to manufacture it, ship it, like all these things that take time. But like Etsy and Pinterest, people can like make up ideas super fast, like make something in the backyard, sell it on Etsy, pin it on Pinterest. And it happens so fast. And so we use that as kind of a trend 
thing to go, like, what's working now? What are people liking? What if, what creative ways have you seen p- business owners use Pinterest to kind of influence decisions in their business? So before we, got, we, before I talk a little bit more about it, can I drop, since you mentioned the trends, like a, a golden, you know, how can I say? It's a golden tip here. And this is something new and people don't talk much about it, but uh, based on the last couple of years, and it's going to go on the third year, I can see this happening. Uh, can I do that? Can I share? So if you go on the pin, on the trends, Pinterest, that you have to have an account to get there, okay? Uh, it's not like you get there with that. You actually you get to it through your account. But Pinterest has something called Pinterest Trends Predicts. So what is it? They put a lot of effort into research with Black Swan. I don't even know who else. I don't remember names, but with a lot of big people. And they want to research the trends that are not yet trending. Based on the previous year, you know, behavior on the platform, on the internet, they are able to call out what's going to trend on the upcoming year. It's almost like you have, you know, you're looking through, you know, a window and seeing what's going to happen. And that's so exciting. Now you're going to say, well, how do they know? Well, proof is in the pudding. Why? The first two years, 80% of the called out trends worked. So for example, if you go in the trends, you're going to say, still see their trend predicts what they predict in December of 2021. So they have several trends in different areas, well-being, home decor, uh, traveling. And I can see how some of them, and the one that comes to my mind the most is peril. So they mentioned perils are making a comeback, peril, everything. And actually I'm seeing a lot of you know, more perils than before, the colors uh, on, you know, the core and accessories, even for guys, which is like, where have this been? And that's one of the things they called out. Another uh, trend they called out is that people are going to be looking for more watches. You know, we are back to wrist watches. We want the fancy collectible wrist watch. You can see that you're wearing one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I used to be like the Apple Watch guy, but yeah, it definitely is like there's a trend now, right? It's like kind of wow, like we're coming yes. back to that. We, you know, you want to give a gift, or you're looking for something you want this nice, expensive watch, you know, a little watch box where you can display your collection. So this is something they called out in December when it was published, and I can go on and on with other ideas. And so that tells me, okay, when December comes now, 2022, and they publish. We're going to go over those trends and that going to share with us, okay, what will people be looking at? Another trend, uh, they were talking about biophilia and pretty much, can you see how plants are the new pets? Excuse me, pets are the new kids, right? So people creating rooms for their (laughs) pets and stuff like that. So they did talk about this and it's happening. If you go on TikTok, you see people with those huge plant rooms inside the house. It is a trend, the boho chic with, you know, you know, mixing the materials and glass and gold and, uh, of course, biophilia. So all of those trends, they called it out in December. And so this is going to be out this December. And, of course, we talk about it and they have, usually they bring less time. I think it was about 30, 35. I don't remember. I made content for all of them. But yeah, so this is something to look in. Okay, this kind of shows what are people thinking about, what they are coming up. So if you're going to create a product and you are able to put that in practice, example, pearls, if you are creating accessories and you start create, uh, incorporating it into your collection, you have, you know, you're on the lead right away. Same thing with any of the trends. So this is a goal tip, guys. Look out. We still have time to take a look and see what's going on and also have an insight because I feel that this year trends also gives us a glimpse of it's just next year is just going to be an evolution, right? If we think about uh, what happened you know, in 2020 with COVID and we stayed home and we were wearing all the grays and we were, you know, kind of living in pajamas. And then eventually now we're like, we're seeing all these colors. We are seeing the different haircuts. So it's an evolution, right? Like we had enough of that. We went out. 
We want to yeah. be free. We want to express yes. ourselves. And Pinterest and those trend predicts keeps telling us. So it's a matter of uh, in- interpreting and understanding and putting that to work in our products, in the colors, in the patterns, uh, in the styles. So do that. Now, meanwhile, you can go, when you go to Pinterest uh, on the trends tool from your account, you will also see in real life time the hit of the searches. What are people searching this week for? Um, and we can already see, because Pinterest is a very seasonal platform, that people are done with summer. People are dreaming of fall, Halloween, and all of that. So August 1st, I started seeing all of that in my feed. It's almost like when you go to Costco and you, you know, it's still summer and you walk in and you see all that Halloween and stuff and you go like, oh my, what's going on? It's still summer, but this is how it goes. Remember, people are planners. So when you go to Pinterest, you go on the tools, you can find out. Another thing you can see is that uh, when you search for a search term, which is, let's say, the potty sticker, you know, potty training sticker, you will, Pinterest will show you if, of course, that keyword shows because not all words will show up, just the most searched, but it will tell you throughout the last year until today when it was trending. So we know for a fact that in this, we, we know that already, but nobody is going to be looking for any diet, fitness advice related until we get to the end of December when we are doing our resolutions, right? We are going out to this phase where we, we just don't care. And you can see that on the search, on the trends tool. So how do you use that? You can measure, okay, if you are launching seasonal products, you can have a, you can create ahead of time and you know when do you have to put them out. Uh, or if you are thinking, okay, is this something that would be helpful that people would like? You can see, okay, if it's something that it was high on search and is decreasing and people seem not to care for it, you can say, well, maybe I, I want to hold off on this and search for something that is slightly trending so we can go all in. So this is how you use the trends tool. Now on the platform itself, through the searches, right? The content that we put on Pinterest lasts forever, doesn't go away. But so that means that when you search something, you're going to see what, what people are searching. You know, what's showing up first is what people are searching for now, recently. So that gives you an idea. And then eventually, if once you kind of develop the eye for it, you will see that certain trends start popping up slowly. And it's kind of like hinting you, hey, take a look at this. You know, maybe this is something that you can leverage in your product production, in the style, in, you know, everything that you're creating. Mm. I love that. Thank you for sharing more about that specific trends tool. I feel like so yeah. many people f- launching different businesses, different products. Yeah. That's something that we can really utilize. And I'm even interested to see like, what are those up and coming trends <laughs> and how can I use Pinterest to better serve my audience and to really think about like, how do I want to innovate and serve people at a higher level? So thank you for sharing that. I don't think I knew the depth of that trends tool at all. And that yes. you said the yearly report comes out every just once a year. Remember, once a year. Okay. So if you go today on the you know trends of Pinterest.com, I believe that's what it is. You're gonna you know they're gonna offer you at one point of the page the trend predicts Pinterest trend predicts, and then you can see and you're gonna see that a lot of that stuff we are seeing right now. So either they made it all up and people fell for it, which is fine as. I am sure that as a product seller, if somebody made something up and you created a product and you sold, it's the same as if people naturally or decided they want, right? <laughs> no. So this is how I feel about it. So we are looking into opportunities and ways to serve better. Yes, we want to create our own content, our own products. They stay true to what we create and what we have, but... If we know how to pretty much either by dressing up or by fine tuning that product to what people want, we can serve them better. We can, you know, you're not creating just because they want. No, you're creating what you want, what you like, what you create, but in a way that will serve them better, that they will see it. 
It doesn't matter if you have something that's so amazing, that is so good, but nobody sees, nobody interacts, nobody even knows about it. You know, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Teresa. If if uh, listeners are intrigued, they want to dive a little bit more into Pinterest, where's the best place for them to find you online, follow you? Um, where should they go? Okay, so I am pretty much on all platforms. You're going to find, if you search my first and last name, you're going to find me. Uh, but specifically, TikTok and Instagram, it's first and last name, Teresa Toledo dot social because somebody got my name first and they don't even need the account and they don't want to, I don't know, I can't reach out anymore. No, nobody responds. So I just said, okay, that's totally fine. But the other platforms such as Pinterest, YouTube, first and last name, Teresa Toledo, and you will find me everywhere. Awesome. I love that. So good. Yeah. I highly recommend finding her on TikTok. I love all your TikToks. A lot of Great little tips in there. Um, just like quick actionable there. stuff about Pinterest. Now, since one thing is that um, if somebody's like, you know what, this is so exciting, so fun, but I don't need one more thing. This is what I want you to keep in mind. If you're already creating content, especially video content for Reels or for TikTok, you can repurpose that to Pinterest. It's going to take maybe a little bit of your time, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Make sure that you are reposting that without the watermark, that you have your profile optimized. And you see, it's those are seeds that you're planting. And when you least expect, you're gonna have you're gonna be everywhere and people say, Wow, i I can see you everywhere. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's, that's so powerful. Well, thank you, Teresa. Uh, this has been an awesome episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. And uh, if you're listening, take a nugget from here and go take action on it. And we'll see you in the next show. Thank you so much for having me here. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. Hey, if you are not a part of our Rainmaker Mastermind, we have a new opportunity for you to book a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with one of our Rainmaker coaches. If you want to get a call with them, see if it's a good fit for you to work with us to build a business that allows you to have time freedom and financial freedom, you can get that call at makeitrainmama.com slash podcast. That's makeitrainmama, M-O-M-M-A, dot com slash podcast.